Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Have you wanted to start to get into saddle hunting, but either one, you don't want to pay some of the ridiculous prices that they're asking, or two, it's getting close to deer season and you don't have time to wait two, three months for a saddle order? Well, this is the video for you. Hey guys, welcome back. So, do it yourself tree saddle. Uh, it's pretty easy and I'm gonna show you how it's done. All right, so how, a little backstory on this, how this all started for me was, two years ago, I wanted to get into hunting out of a tree saddle. I got tired of hauling around bulky, heavy lock-on tree stands or climbers through these mountains. So, I was like, I need a tree saddle. Well, guess what? Turns out, tree saddles were pretty god dang expensive, and you had to wait like three freaking months in order to get one. So, I got to digging around, I got on a few forums, there wasn't much on YouTube, which is why I'm making this video. Uh, and I kind of figured out how to make my own tree saddle for literally a fraction of the cost. Alright, so, uh, here it is guys. It's, uh, this is the, the Gillahan Tree Saddle 9000, if you will. Uh, what, I, what the base is, is you start with just a sit drag. And you can buy these sit drags, that's what this part is, off Amazon. They cost like 30 bucks. But when you get the sit drag, it comes with like this ridiculously long bridge, which is what this part right here. So what I do is I take the sit drag and I cut off everything except the actual tree uh, part where you sit in. And the bridge, the tether and all that, cut it off. Don't throw it away because you're going to need it. All right. And then after I did that, I took a piece of the straps that I cut off and I made two loops to hook into your lineman belt and I don't know if you tried to put up a, a tree stand or anything like that without a lineman belt but it's a pain in the butt and it's even worse when you're trying to have a saddle like you gotta like hold on one hand it's, it's, it's horrible it's messy you need a lineman loop alright so then I went to my local hardware store and I was looking for some rope, all right? Listen, stress everything first right now. The rope that you choose, your life literally depends on it. So make sure it's a quality climbing rope. Long story short, I couldn't find the rope that I wanted, that I wanted to, you know, risk my life on. So I ordered some camouflage climbing rope. That's what this is right here. It, it, people use it for rock climbing. It's got a 1,500 pound tensile strength to it, so I'm not too worried about it. And I just tied a good strong climbing knot on each side of the uh, sit drag here, as you can see, like that and like that. And the length of your bridge, okay, so that's all gonna depend on you. So I kinda left it adjustable until I figured out the length of bridge that I wanted, and then I made it permanent. Um, so. You might be thinking that this looks kind of similar to literally every other high dollar tree saddle out on the market. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because the reason why is because all these saddle brands that just came up uh, literally overnight, they are all based on this right here. They're all, they all made their own saddles out of these sit drags back in the day. And they figured out a way to commercialize it. And if you want to skip all the you know fancy bells and whistles, they're nice, but they're not necessary. Then just get you a sit drag and make it yourself. So basically, the premise of this is uh, you take it and you put it on. And then you're, another thing you're going to need is an old belt. Uh, the belt doesn't hold any of your weight at all. All the belt does is hold the saddle on your body where you put it. And that's going to be 100% necessary because your hands are going to be full putting in screw steps, putting up sticks. Uh, you're going to need it attached to your body. And for the tether, all I did is this is a Summit brand. I've had it for like five years. Uh, all it is is just a, like a little climbing tree tether that you would use for a climber and you just loop it through 
just like that. And then you hook your prusik to your bridge. And, and that's that. Let's go put all this stuff on a tree and I'll show you the ins and outs of it. All right guys, we're here at a tree. So real quick, just a disclaimer here. Uh, your entire life depends on the on on this this tree salver right here. So I am a fan of using a rock climbing harness. I put a rock climbing harness on first, and then I put my tap my tree saddle on over the top of that. And then all you, all I do is just add a second prusik knot, and that gives you two forms of attachment to the tree. If you're gonna use this type of saddle, you really, I mean, it's its a have to sort of thing. Uh, you have to have a rock harness and you have to have two points of attachment because there's no sense in taking chance on your life. So just like I said, safety is the safest thing. Use a rock harness accompanied with this. It doesn't affect any mobility and it makes it 1000% safer. So now that we got that over with, so, I always put my saddle on when I leave the truck. And as you can see, I've got my saddle on. I keep my saddle a little higher on my back. Got my belt on. And we come up to our tree right here. All right, this is the perfect size tree for an have a tree saddle. It's about the size, the diameter of a basketball. And the way I set it up is you want to, ideally, you want to be facing where you think the deer is coming from. So you want the tree between you and where the deer are and you want the deer to walk by your weak side. So let's just say that uh, that bench over there is a scrape and I'm gonna wanna hunt that scrape. I come in here about 20 yards from it. I find me a good tree. I use helium sticks. People have different preferences. Use what you like. I use heliums. Uh, I put my helium on here. I got my tree saddle. I keep my tether tucked in my belt just to keep it out of the way when I'm walking. Uh, loosen up my prusik knot here. That way I don't have to deal with it when I'm in the tree. Look at it, kind of gauge it. And then I'm just gonna climb this tree. Guys, so once you climb up the tree, you've got your tree tether here. This is just like I said, it's just a climbing tether that you would use if you were on a climbing stand. Loop it around the tree. Throw it over there. Ideally, you would have a lineman belt on, but I don't because I'm too lazy to take out my lineman belt just for this video. So, take it, and I take it, and I put this tether up as high as I can reach. As high as I can reach. About like that. Pull it snug. I pull my bridge out of my belt loop it in my beaner, screw the gate closed, grab a hold of this, pull it tight, pull my saddle down a little bit, and I'm hunting guys. Now if you'll notice, the, the gravity wants to pull me down the hill, and a little tip is if you'll take the loop where you're tether attaches and rotate it up the hill and not like counteract that gravity so this is absolutely comfortable uh, this is that I mean I love this tree all right so everyone wonders why I hunt out of a tree saddle well I'm gonna show you right now it's light it's dependable and I can shoot here I can loop around the tree I can shoot there. I can come back around the tree. Grab my bow, come over here. I can shoot here. The only place that I really can't shoot is directly to my right. Like, I mean, and honestly, if there was a big enough buck, I really feel like I can make it happen. So, uh, that's it guys. Just a homemade, simple saddle you don't need all the bells and whistles. I think with the rope and everything in it, I might have $60 maybe. That's not counting this, because I mean, I already had that. And I'm sure if you're any kind of deer hunter, you have one of these, so you're not gonna need it. 
So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Until then, we'll see you next time, guys.